Okay, we picked up this question from your practice kit for interpretation of financial statements. Very important topic always. Uh, first, before we start doing this question, let me give you a general, uh, you know, perception or format how these questions are done. Um, we know that interpretation questions are very popular, section C question, and you can't just ignore it. Uh, it involves two things. One is calculation of ratios, and one is your interpretation about those ratios. Uh, calculation of ratios in many cases is not really very difficult, or at least you can say that some of the ratios are easy. Most of the ratios are easy. Maybe in one or calculating one or two ratios, you might get stuck. That is possible. But again, you need not, not to worry because whatever you will calculate correct, you will get number. Uh, in some questions, like in this one, there is a little bit of trick in calculating the ratios. I mean, that's why I picked up this question because the calculation uh, needs some kind of adjustment, which is unusual. Uh, in any case, calculation has less marks, interpretation has more marks. And students, they get stuck there that how do we interpret, okay? We don't know. So first of all, you should remember a general principle that interpretation is not like this, that you say that, you know, last year, the current ratio was 1.5. This year, it has become 1.2 and it is bad. This is not interpretation, okay? Or you say that uh, our gearing was, you know, debt equity ratio was, I don't know, 70-30, now it has become 60-40, it is bad. Not something like this. You need to spot out, you need to find out the reason for this happening. Okay, uh, generally we believe or theoretically, theoretically what happens that if everything is same last year, then everything, I mean, whatever we did last year, if we are doing the same things this year, the results should be the same. When I tell you that, let's suppose that last year, my, I don't know, uh, profitability was 15% and this year profitability is 12%. So it is dropping down, there must be some reason. And you need to identify those th that reason and speak in relation to that. Now, why profit is going down? Why liquidity is going down? Maybe you have started a new product. Maybe you have started a new project. Maybe you have uh, you know, acquired some business, made some acquisition, and the other company's results are impacting the overall results. So something different has happened in this year. And you should be relating everything to that particular, um, you know, how to say incident. So whatever event that took place, so everything is a result of some events, okay? So cause and effect, think like cause and effect. So this is general approach. The second thing which you should understand that while doing interpretation, not all the interpretation questions, they ask you to focus on the same areas, okay? We know that we have got four areas like profitability and liquidity and, you know, gearing and then market ratios. We divide ratios into four categories, but not in all questions, all four of them are present or not in all questions, all four of them are equally focused. Uh, for example, in this particular question, which I have picked up, uh, there is now no mention about share prices. There is no mention about dividends. There is no mention about, you know, EPS. So that market side, the fourth dimension, which we call market ratios, in which we calculate, you know, dividend, dividend yield or EPS, etc. Those are missing. So we will not be focusing on that. So every question will have some specific requirement. But the general thing is like interpretation when you make, don't just write down the numbers in two words, okay? Don't write down the numbers in two words. Find out that why this number has changed. Uh, okay, it is bad, it is not good, or it is good, whatever. And this could be the possible reason because sometimes you do have the reasons and sometimes you use the word possible reason because full information is not available. Anyways, we start reading this question now. Vote Bank Company, June 14 amended, uh, shown below, now, let me just made it, make it slightly bigger, 100%. So I would say that um, I'll spend some time on reading with you. By the way, um, it's very important that the 
interpretation question you read carefully there are some questions which i said immediately jump to the requirement when you are doing short questions from section a section b i see first i say first read the requirement and then read the question in this case i try to read the question to make a picture in my mind i will not spend a lot of time on these numbers but just quickly browse it so shown below are the financial statements of work bank wood bank company for its most recent two years 2003 and 14 Statement of profit and loss for the year ended 31st March. Year is ending at 31st March. Revenue is increasing. Cost of sale is uh, there. It should be in brackets. Then you get your gross profit. Then you have gross profit is also increasing in two years. Admin expenses are increasing. Uh, distribution costs are increasing. Finance cost has significantly increased. And this is my profit before tax. It has increased. Income tax expenses there, of course, has increased. And profit for the year. Okay, a very quick thing. Don't no need to spend more time on that. We will do these numbers when we find ratios. Uh, then it says statement of financial position balance sheet. PPE property plant and equipment has increased, and suddenly the goodwill has come in. Goodwill was not there before. It looks like that they are making some acquisition, and this is actually a consolidated thing. When group when when goodwill comes in, uh, it means that you know uh, it's a consolidated thing. Because in individual company, you don't show the goodwill. And so these are your assets. Then you've got inventories going up. You've got receivables increasing, and cash has significantly gone gone down. From five million to half a million, I can assume that they made some acquisition and they paid out cash. Okay, so initial understanding is cash is going down because of some acquisition. Uh, then it says equity is same, so it looks like that they made acquisition but they didn't issue any shares. Um, retained earnings have increased. And by the way, if I see retained earnings have increased, they have also given out some dividend because their profit is more, okay? Their profit for the year is 10,500 and uh, their previous retained earnings were 10,000. So if I consider that 10,500 plus last year retained earning 10,000, you should be having here retained earning 20,500. I only see 15,000. I can see that they have given out dividend of 5,500. So this is the quick thing which you just keep on doing in your mind so that the picture start coming in. So they did an acquisition during the year. Now, so far what I have understood, they made an acquisition during the year, they paid out cash, but at the same time, they also paid out dividend. So 4.5, whatever, maybe not 4.5 because some of the cash they might have used in some other places like purchasing other assets, et cetera. But some cash definitely, I'm sure it has been paid out. And dividend was also paid out 5.5 million. So retained earnings comes to 95. Uh, you've got non-current liabilities. Oh, that's a big jump, okay? A big jump on non-current liabilities. They issue 10% loan notes, immediately understand what are they doing with this thing. Probably they, are, they use this finance which they collected for the acquisition of this new subsidiary. We will read it later. Trade payables have increased. Trade payables have significantly increased. Why this trade company's trade payables have increased? Again, it is possible that the subsidiary which they purchased, that subsidiary has liabilities payable and those payables are added up here. Uh, current tax payable has increased, okay. And this is my total equity and liabilities for the two years. So in three minutes, we understand some situation. It's very important to make a picture in your mind, okay? Don't jump, uh, don't rush quickly. Uh, just don't read the question, try to understand and make picture in your mind. The following information is available now. <clears throat> On 1st January 2004, now, dates are important. When is the financial statement? 31st March, okay. When is the next date acquisition, this is about acquisition because I just quickly read it, that on 1st January 2004, 
uh, like January, February, March, three months before the closing of the year, Wood Bank Company acquired a controlling interest in Sean Company, Shaw Company for $50 million. Okay. <clears throat> it paid for the acquisition through the issue of additional 10% loan notes and by using some of its cash reserves. <coughs> <coughs> Shaw Company was an unincorporated entity, which means no presence in the share market. And its result for the three months from 1st January to 31st March and net assets, including goodwill, not subject, are included in the Wood Bank's financial statement. Okay, we understand. So whatever this Shaw Company subsidiary made some profits or whatever balance sheets, their results are shown within the Shaw Company within the wood company. So like I said, that it is consolidated. So these numbers, uh, like this income statement, this profit, uh, this profit, whatever, it includes the three months results of the subsidiary as well. Okay. So this revenue includes that thing and others and so on. So it means that it is consolidated. <clears throat> including the Wood Bank's financial statements for the year. There were no other purchases or sales of non-current assets during the year, okay, clear. Extracts of the results for the three months of the previously separate business of Shaw Company, which are included in the Wood Bank's statement of PNL for the year are these. So these are the results of three months. This is the three month results, which you have added up into this thing in the Wood Bank's results. So what was the results? Revenue for three months, 30,000. Cost of sale for three months, 21. Gross profit, nine. Distribution cost, two, two. And profit before interest and taxes would be 5,000. 9,000 minus 4,000, 5K or 5 million you could consider as <coughs> their PBIT, okay. Then you have uh, the following capital, the following six ratios have been correctly calculated for Wood Bank Company for the years ended 31st March 2003. The following six ratios have been correctly calculated. They tell you these are correctly calculated for the Wood Bank for the year 2003. So these are the ratios for the last year, okay, for 2003. ROCE, return on capital employed, 10.5%. Now we know ROCE, return on capital employed means PBIT, profit before interest and taxes. Uh, okay, so your capital employed, um, ROCE, return on capital employed means PBIT divided by uh, capital employed. Let me write down the formula here. If I could, if my this tablet allows me. <clears throat> okay, it does not. Okay, sorry for this disruption. Just got my this charger here. So we know that ROCE uh, the formula is PBIT, profit before interest and taxes, divided by capital employed, okay? And capital employed itself is your uh, total assets minus current liabilities. Or you can say that capital employed is your net assets, which means equity, net assets, plus your long-term debt, okay? So either you use this formula or you use that formula, it gives you the same. Now here the question says that return on capital employed is 10.5%. Um, and then you have got uh, profit before interest and taxes divided by year end total assets, less current liabilities, the same formula. Then net asset turnover, net asset turnover. Now that is a different thing, by the way, because it says equal to capital employed. Now that is unusual. That is unusual because net asset is what? Let me tell you, your net assets are 
if you consider from here, what is my capital employed? Let's suppose in 2004, the capital employed would be total assets. One method is total assets 175 minus current liabilities, which is 25, okay? So you can say that 175 minus 25, my capital employed is 150, for example, capital employed. Or you can say <clears throat> that capital employed is net assets 95 plus my long-term debt 55. And that also gives you answer 150. So whichever way you do, you get the same capital employed. And now generally capital employed is not equal to net assets. It is not equal to net asset because net asset is where? Net asset is only 95 and capital employed is 95 plus 55. In normal circumstances, seeing this balance sheet, I would say net assets are 95K and capital employed is 150K or 150 million. This is what is usually you will do. But here in this question, what do they tell you? They tell you that, they say to you that the this is the ratio, net asset turnover. Net asset turnover, turnover means sales, which means what is the ratio to sales to net assets? Sales to net asset ratio, okay? This is called, but they say net asset equal to capital employed. So in this particular situation, your answer will become wrong. If you would say that my net assets are 95 and my capital employed is 150, <clears throat> generally they are like this. But in this question, it says that net asset is equal to capital employed. So you would take net asset as 150. Net assets, you will take 150. It is only a very special treatment under this question. Then you've got gross. Now, this is like Wood Bank Company's 2003 results. Current ratio 1.7, bearing debt e equity 5.3, profit before PBIT 9.1, gross profit margin 22, net asset 1.16. Most probably we are going to find out the same ratios for 2004 also. We will put up the numbers, okay? And that should not be very difficult. Then comes your requirement. Requirement number A, calculate the ratios in three, this part, for the Wood Bank Company for the year ended 31st March 2004. So very straight away the question comes up, the same ratios you have to calculate, you have to calculate, but calculate for 2004 data. So it shouldn't be very difficult. If we go up to, now I'm going to use, I'll forget about this pen and we'll come back to Excel, okay? If you have any question, please ask me until here. Any question you, you may ask. Sir, the ratio calculations uh, will always be mentioned in the question. So they will tell you calculate this, 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 this ratio. Um, sometimes they specifically say, like in this question, they say specifically. Sometimes if they tell you that make interpretation, I mean, find out the ratios and do uh, and, and discuss the performance, then you understand that, okay, I have to do liquidity, all four or five ratios, profitability. Sometimes they tell you, sometimes they don't. If they don't, then you have to do a lot actually. So now for Wood, uh, what is the name? Woodland or Wood Bank? Wood Bank Company. Wood Bank Company, and this is my part A. And what ratios I need to calculate? I need to calculate ratios for 2004, okay? Uh, 2004 and generally speaking they told us which ratios we need to do I just drag it down so that we know exactly here we put it here okay so that we are in in line so first is ROCE uh, then I have my net assets turnover then we need to find out your GP ratio gross profit ratio then you need to do your profit before interest and taxes, PBIT ratio. And then you need to do your current ratio. This shouldn't be very difficult. There is some, uh, and then you need to do your gearing. 
Okay, so these are the things we need to do. These are the ratios we have to calculate. So ROCE, return on capital employed, uh, you can, if you are, if you have time, you should be doing like this, okay? This is the formula which I'm using, for example. PBIT divided by capital employed, it clears my mind, it, it all, and it also tells to examiner that where you are coming from. So where is your PBIT? So your PBIT, how much is PBIT? Can you see here for 2004? Can you tell me how much is PBIT? Profit before interest and taxes. Can I take this line? I cannot because it says profit before tax. It has already subtracted the interest. So they made a trick. They just tried to cheat you because sometimes they show you PBIT. In this statement, they are not showing you profit before interest and taxes. What they made a line, it is called profit before tax. You have to add back this interest, add back the interest to find out your profit. So, okay, uh, it is 16,250 plus 1,750, okay. 16,250 plus 1,750. I take this number here. So, That is 18,000. And how much is the capital employed? Capital employed is, yeah, we discussed capital employed is 95 plus 55, which makes me 150,000. So I would say that, okay, 18,000 divided by 150,000. And then I take it here and I put it like this. And that gives me. 12%. My capital employed is 12%. By the way, just for a quick thing, uh, did they tell us for the last year? For the last year, 2003, it was 10.5%. Okay. This information was given. I'm just putting it separate so that it would be, it would be uh, helpful for making some analysis. Then you have net asset turnover. So net asset turnover will, you will talk about your, how much is your turnover? Turnover is 150 and net assets, again, I'm using the same. Now this is here, I would say turnover divided by uh, net assets. And this should be Turnover is 150,000 divided by net assets. No, oh, was it 150,000? Yeah, 150,000. 150,000 and divided by 150,000. Now, this is where I was saying you that net assets generally are is a different thing. But in this question, they say that net asset and capital employed is same. If I have to do it in the traditional way, I would take net assets only 95,000. And I would have done, you know, 150,000, my turnover divided by net assets, my 95,000. It would have given me a different answer. But here it is the same. Uh, what was in last year? 1.16. So that's a different number. Now, what does it tell you actually? The net asset turnover, it tells you that how effectively are you generating revenue from using your assets? The bigger this ratio, the better it is. If luckily you get a ratio of three, it means that you are doing more sales with assets. Okay, for example, imagine a very simple example. You've got one car, I've got one car. We both use them as revenue. We both use them as cab. We both use them as taxi. So I'm using the taxi car, you are using that same taxi car, how much revenue we are using. The car is the same value, 20,000 for you, 20,000 for me. I Every day I make a revenue, not a profit, not profit. I make a revenue of, you know, $1,500. You make a revenue of $300. It means that I'm using my asset more efficiently. So this is actually, it tells you uh, how efficiently the assets are used. Now, if I see last year, it was, if I see my ROCE, ROCE has improved. We will do interpretation later. 
but I'm not doing a question, I'm explaining you. So that's why I'm, I'm speaking too many things. When you do an exam, you have to do a little bit faster. I'm not doing a question, I'm explaining a question. So when we will do our interpretation, we know that ROCE has improved. Why it has improved? Uh, maybe because of the acquisition, maybe the new company which we purchased, maybe we will find out the reason, but our asset turnover has gone down. Uh, okay, I tell you here why net asset turnover has gone down. You know what? That's interesting thing. You paid 50,000 or whatever for purchasing the asset, this new company, and that is reflected in your capital employed. So 50,000 goes into the balance sheet as your capital employed. But when you invested this money, this, uh, this investment should give you some revenue, this company, and that revenue is only coming for three months. This is the reason. Because you made acquisition only three months before. So understand your income statement is for 12 months. The subsidiary which you purchased, their revenue, you know, inside of 150,000, inside of 150,000, some revenue is for wood company, some revenue is from Shaw company. Wood company, 12 months revenue, but Shaw company, only three months revenue. So I'm adding only three months revenue here, but on my balance sheet, the full 50,000 is there. And that's why the ratio goes down. Next year, it will be good because this time it was only 30,000. So instead of 150, actually 120 is my revenue and 30 is coming from there for three months. But next year, let's suppose, let's suppose it had been the same. Let's suppose I had made this acquisition beginning of the year. So then 120 here and 120 here because it is making 10,000 per month. My turnover would have been 240. And then when 240 divided by my capital employed 150, it would have given me a ratio of 1.6 or 1.7, which is good. Do you understand this impact of three months thing? Are you clear what I'm trying to explain the impact because of the three months? Okay. So we got another ratio. Then you've got gross profit ratio. Gross profit ratio generally is easy, simple. What is the gross profit and what is the sales? Gross profit is 33,000 and sales are 150. So I would say 33 and 150, 33 divided by 150. I just ignored these zeros. It's all the same. You put zeros, you not put zeros. So it is 22% here. How much was last year? Last year was also 22%. Okay, that seems almost the same. Then I have my PBIT ratio, profit before interest and taxes. So PBIT, so how much is profit before interest and taxes is not 16, but this is PBIT together. 16 to 50 plus your finance cost. So it makes me 18,000. 18,000 divided by 150, okay? So 18,000 divided by 150, it is 18 divided by 150. I take it here and we put it down. It is 12% and how much it was, uh, last year, last year it was 9.1%. Okay. Then you've got your current ratio. Now current ratio, we know it is current assets divided by current liabilities. So what are my current assets and what are current liabilities? You've got current assets as inventories, trade receivables and cash, it is 27,000 and your current liabilities are 25,000. So 27 divided by 25, as easy as it is. 27 divided by 25. So 27 divided by 25, I put it here again. It gives me 1.08%, 1 1.08. Uh, it should be 1.08, not in percentage. Last year it was 1.7, ah, that's a big drop. That's a big drop. You are suffering in uh, liquidity problem will arise. And result is because we used cash. Remember we had before 5 million, 
and when now we have only half a million so that is where our uh, cash balance has changed and then you've got your gearing ratio debt over debt plus equity gearing ratio you calculate in different methods okay sometimes the, you do as uh, debt over equity sometimes you say debt over debt plus equity this is a better way in this question they told you debt over debt plus equity use the formula even if they do not tell you use this formula debt over debt plus equity and debt is the long term debt okay and equity is here so if i see here my debt is 55 equity is 95 and debt plus equity is the total of this so 55 over 55 plus 95 i will do like this so i would say 55 divided by 55 plus 95 okay i take this number here and oh my god this is 37% before it was 5.3%. So your gearing has increased a lot. Gearing increase means debt has increased a lot. You have taken a lot of risk. Why gearing has increased? We know the reason because we issued these long uh, loan notes of 50 million there. There we go. Before it was 5 million debt, now it is 55 million debt. That is the acquisition which is the result of the acquisition. So your part 1 it says that calculate the ratios it is five marks question you should be doing it much faster in exam i'm i'm i i'm supposed to give explanation so i'm taking more time if you have any question you ask me here otherwise i move to part number b sir in the okay we start with now part b <clears throat> part b says calculate for the year ended 31st march 2004 equivalent ratios to the first four which means 1 2 3 and 4 these first four only for wood bank only for wood bank company excluding the effects of the purchase of shaw company now this is a slightly where you need to make adjustment what momin was asking that do we make some adjustment before calculating the ratios yes in this part you need to make adjustment so they ask you because the numbers which we have taken from this income statement and balance sheet they are for the combined group okay we got these numbers for 2004 now they say that produce for 2004 again and produce the first four ratios <coughs> first four ratios one time more but this time take away the impact of the subsidiary the shaw company which you just purchased 3 months ago now pbit divided by capital employed so we need to find out the pbit uh profit before interest and taxes and i need to show some numbers here okay so i will remove this formulas because formulas we gave before and i'll just put numbers here because we need to show the adjustments so of course we need to calculate profit before interest and taxes of wood company how much is it, it was it we before we took it 18000 okay before we took this number as 18000 and this 18000 included the pbit profit before interest and taxes of shaw company as well how much was that actually if you see that subtract this number this is 5000 so 18000 actually includes this 5000 as well so what i'm going to do now i'll just write down here 18000 minus 5000 this is my <clears throat> or i can exclude the three zeros because i have less space i will say 18 minus 5 okay let me do like this three zeros three zeros i'm just removing and divided by my capital employed so how much was the capital employed capital employed we took before 150000 150k which you can see it on the screen before and minus the capital employed which you spent in this company so how much did you spend in this company you purchased it for 50k they told you that the company was purchased for 50 million so for 50 million i invested and this 5 million i got this is what happened we invested 50 million and within 3 months we got only 5 million so this is i subtract from the 
PBIT, this 50 I, I, I subtract from my capital employed. So it gives me now, if I take it down here, that is 13%. Okay, so it looks like that with this acquisition, we are making 12%. Without this acquisition, we would have made 13%. So is this a time to worry? I think no, it is not the time to worry. You know what? Although it looks like that if you had not purchased this subsidiary, you would have made 13%. After purchasing the subsidiary, you are making 12%. Apparently looks bad, but it is not bad. Why? Because here, when you get this 12%, you only included three months profit, okay? Three months profit, 5,000, but 50,000 was fully used. If I tell you theoretically, now practically in reality, when you will, when you will continue for one year, then what will happen? I don't know, but it looks like Otherwise, that 18,000 minus 5,000 without this, or 18,000 I have, but this is three months profit. It includes 5,000, which is three months profit. If I were, if I had worked for full year, I would have made 15,000 more. The subsidiary would have, subsidiary is giving me 5,000 in three months. If it had been given a full year chance, it would have been added like this, 15K more on the top, okay? And this is how I can predict. Whereas on the other hand, I would have said, but your capital employed would remain same. Capital employed would not change. So if I had acquired this thing one year ago, it would have gone too much up. It would have given me big benefit actually. So this thing which I'm seeing, it is because I'm adding this uh, here in this where uh, 12%, I'm adding only three months profit, but full capital employed. This is one big disadvantage of ROCE. If you remember my lecture where I was explaining ROCE, I said that ROCE is greatly impacted by the time of the purchase, because whatever you make investment, full investment goes to the balance sheet, but revenue or profits, they only come for the smaller period of acquisition. Imagine you have acquired this company on the last day of the year. So if you guy, if you had got this on the last year of the year, then no profit goes to income statement, but full investment goes to the balance sheet and it would have dropped down significantly. Anyways, now let's do net assets turnover and net asset turnover. So we need to find out the turnover. So your turnover was 150 in total. Within this 150, this subsidiary turnover is only 30. So I would say, you know, 150 minus 30, this is the turnover by the parent divided by net assets. And net assets, we are taking like 150, like before, because in this question, they say specifically that net assets are equal to capital employed. And I put it here. This number is 1.2. So if I had, you know, if I had not taken this acquisition, I would have got 1.2. Now I'm getting one. The reason is same. Turnover is for only three months. It is not full one year turnover. Then you've got your GP ratio, gross profit ratio. So where is your gross profit? Your total gross profit you have taken as 33. Within 33, uh, gross profit is nine for this company, which is called your Shaw company. So you should be subtracting, you should be saying 33 minus nine and uh, divided by my turnover and turnover was 150 minus 30. Okay. You can call it 120 straight away. So I'm just calculating these numbers, excluding the impact and that gives me 20%. That's perfect. Uh, not perfect, really, actually. If you see gross profit has increased after acquisition. Before acquisition, it was less. Okay. And then PBIT ratio, profit before interest and taxes. So how much is PBIT? PBIT we did before, 18 minus 5. Okay. So I'll use the same number, 18, my PBIT, 
minus the subsidiary PI, uh, PBIT was five divided by my turnover, 150 minus 30, the same number I'm using. So once you develop the logic, then the numbers you keep on just, you know, amending. That is 10.8%. Now, 10.8%. Uh, I did it like PBIT 12%. That's interesting. You see, that's very interesting. Now, it's very interesting thing which has picture has come up. It looks like that after acquisition, after acquisition, what has happened? ROCE has gone down, but your GP ratio and your PBIT has improved. Because GP and PBIT, they are only from income statement. So it looks like that the subsidiary company, Shaw company is more profitable company. I'm taking their three months revenues and three months cost, their profitability is more. Uh, by the way, let me check what is the profitability of Shaw company. I just want to see, it's very interesting, Shaw company. If I only see Shaw company GP, what is their GP? Their gross profit is 9,000 divided by their revenue is 30,000 and it is 30% that they are making fantastic gross profit. What is their PBIT? So their PBIT is 5,000 divided by their sales are 30,000. They've got huge profits. Actually, that is a more profitable business. So what we understand that this Shaw company is much more profitable uh, and therefore the group PBIT and uh, you know these ratios have improved before acquisition 10.8 after acquisition 12 with shaw company without shaw company gp was 20 with shaw company gp is 22 so these two ratios are improving that's a good sign roc has gone down and that is not the problem of acquisition that is the problem within the method of calculation of roc roc has gone down from 13 to 12. And that has gone down because there is a disadvantage in ROC calculation that PBIT is coming only for three months, but capital investment is full going like 50,000. So if I had taken 12 months profit, maybe ROC would also have gone better. ROC, we did 22%, it would have come. I'll be clear on that thing. Okay, so now we have done these two parts. And actually, uh, now you come to number three, it says that assess the comparative financial performance and position, performance and position, which means income statement and balance sheet of Wood Company for the year ended 31st March 2004. Your answer should refer to the effects of the purchase of Shaw Company, which means that when you will compare, because it says that assess the comparative Comparative means two year, 2003, 2004, okay? Uh, this is where I put here 2003, 2004. These numbers we have to speak, okay? And when we are speaking these numbers, we need to refer to the purchase acquisition of Shaw Company. And by the way, the explanation which I have given you throughout this thing, you only have to take it out because while doing these calculations, I was giving you interpretation. When you are in exam, you will only do the numbers and whatever I spoke as interpretation, that should go into part number C. So part C, actually, technically speaking, I already have spoken. So now here, three areas of interpretation we need to do. Profitability, we need to do liquidity, And we need to do gearing because these are the ratios which we have. We don't have the fourth dimension of market ratios. Profitability, we have three ratios here. We have here GP, we have PBIT, and we have ROCE. Okay, these are the three things. For liquidity, ratios, question, please. Just, just, the... just give me a minute, please. For liquidity, we have got only here current ratio, okay? 
And for gearing, of course, we have our gearing ratio, which is debt equity. Yes, a moment, please ask. When you do section C, for example, you have to like uh, divide your answers for each ratio or you can just write everything at once. No, we will write down everything at once together. I'm just uh, writing here to give it a structure. I will not write it down in exam like this. I would say that if we consider now, if I have to speak about the profitability, I would say that the if we come, if now this is how, if I'm an exam, whatever comes to mind, I put in paper, okay? It's not like some um, English literature test in which you have to write down some fancy sentences. Whatever you did so far, we'll do it here. I put this number here, okay? I say that if we compare the ratios for Wood Bank Company for 2003 and four. As far as ROCE is concerned, their ROCE, uh, return on capital employed, uh, this is where did I get it, ROCE. Okay, so, and we have to compare it, not 2003, by the way. We are not comparing this number. Uh, let me take it here. We are comparing it like this. Uh, okay, I'll just keep it here. It says comparative financial performance and position for the year ended 31st March 2004. Your answer should refer to the effect of the purchase of the Shaw company. So you are not comparing 2003 and four, you are actually comparing 2004 with or without Shaw, with or without Shaw. So I would say here like this, so my comparison is like this, 12 and 13, these numbers I'm comparing. I would say that, um, as far as profitability aspect of the business or the financial performance is concerned, we can see that the uh, Woodback company has made a ratio, an ROC ratio of 12%. If they had not purchased this subsidiary, their ratio would have, their ratio would have been 13%. So apparently it looks like, apparently it looks like that the ROC would have been better in the absence of this acquisition. However, we know that while calculating ROCE, we only included three months of profit, whereas the investment of 50,000 has gone into the financial, uh, financial position. And that has pushed down the ROCE. We expect that in next year, when full 12 months of profits will be added into PBIT, this ratio is expected to improve. Number one, uh, speaking about the gross profit ratio, we can see that the gross profit ratio for um, with, with acquisition is 22%. Without acquisition, it would have been 20%. So this, this ratio of a wood bank company has increased by 2%. And that increase of 2% is clearly coming from the results of the Shaw company because the Shaw company, their gross profit ratio is 30%. So apparently Shaw company is uh, re relatively much more profitable. Their operations are much more profitable than the wood company. Coming back to the net profit ratio, if we see the net profit ratio, uh, PBIT, the profit before interest and taxes of the joint company is 12%. Uh, if they had not purchased the comp this thing, they would have made 10.8%. So profitability also has increased or improved. And this is the result of uh, how to say, again, the increased profitability coming into the business by the acquisition of Shaw Company. This is uh, how you should be speaking about profitability. Maybe something more, something less. Then you come back to liquidity ratio. You would say that the liquidity, the current ratio has, uh, as compared to 2003, when we had current ratio of 1.7, now we have got current ratio of only 1.08. Now these numbers I'm comparing with the last year because these I don't have for with or without Shaw. Here I'm making a comparison for the previous year. Here I was making a comparison like this. So if we compare the current ratio of 2004, it has significantly gone down and it has put some liquidity risks into the business. And one obvious reason or one possible reason for that decreasing liquidity could be uh, because we use some cash for acquisition of this Shaw company. And because of using that cash, our cash reserves have gone down, which has put pressure on our liquidity situation. And that actually, that actually 
is reflected in your payables. If you see your payables, payables have increased significantly. It looks like that you as a group are probably unable to pay your liabilities in time. Um, and by the way, you should calculate this payable days. If you want to do something extra, you can quickly calculate payable days like payable divided by cost of sale multiplied by 30%, 365. You want me to do that? I can do that. Cost of sale is 85,800. And here it is payables were, payables were, where are the payables? Yeah, 13,000. So 13,000, my payable divided by 85,800 cost of sales multiplied by 365, okay? So this is my payable days in 2003. I just did it like this, okay? 2003. In 2004, my payable days would be 21,000 payables and cost of sale is 117,000. Uh, 21,000 divided by 117,000 multiplied by 365. Payable days have increased. So payable days have increased from 55 days to 65 days, which reflects um, a longer payable period. It looks like that we are delaying payments to supplier. This is the area where companies should pay attention. Otherwise relationship with suppliers, they might uh, be putting them on stake, okay? So that's done for your uh, liquidity. That's all because in liquidity, there is nothing else. Uh, if we come back to gearing ratio, we can see that their gearing ratio previously was 5.3%. Now this has increased to 37%. And that is the result of the purchase or acquisition of the subsidiary where they issued or they issued some loan notes of 50, 50 million. Uh, but 37,000 is still within the acceptable limits. And probably because of the more profitable business acquisition, a business which you are acquiring at a very, uh, with high profitability margins, maybe the shareholders, they might not be unhappy. They will not, they, they, they shouldn't be unhappy with this increased gearing. Increased gearing means increased return, but at the same time, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, increased gearing means increased risks, but at the same time, our returns are also increasing. So the increase in the risk actually is justified by the increase in the returns. Overall, it looks like, overall, it looks like that this acquisition is a good acquisition. Uh, in future, it is going to increase, further increase the profitability ratios. And uh, if the company is willing to pay, uh, 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 one more thing, by the way, I forgot uh, because we have to pay 5.5 million on um, this interest. This should go into liquidity. So we should say that under the liquidity thing, we should remember that in this year, we only paid interest for three months, only paid interest for three months and our profits are there. In next years, of course, you have to pay more interest and more interest means more cash going out and therefore it might become an area of concern. You should also understand that as we discussed before, the company has paid 5.5 million in dividends. So, and their possible future interest payments are also 5.5 million. So will they be able to make this 11 million in next year? If not, then dividends will be cut down. This should go on to the liquidity thing because you have to pay interest. This year, it was only three months interest like 1750 or something here, okay? This is three months interest. Next year, interest will be more. So we need to make sure that liquidity will be further impacted by the you know, payment of the interest and therefore the company should consider on their dividend policy as well. Um, overall, it's a good uh, scenario. If they could only manage the cash flows, if they could only manage the liquidity thing, it looks like that the business is doing good. That's all. I mean, what else? Any of these things I actually spoke while doing calculations. So I didn't do like numbers first and interpretation later. When I'm doing numbers, I'm making a picture in my mind. And then when you go to the end, so you just have composed your thoughts. Whatever you, you compose your thoughts or you created that picture, just put it on paper.
सर ओके इट्स नॉट अबाउट राइटिंग टू मच और राइटिंग टू लिटल ACCA does not tell you, you know, when you go for IELTS exam, they say write down three hundred words essay. ACCA does not say write out, write down hundred words interpretation. You need to see how much marks are given. So ACCA tells you from here. This is for eleven marks. Eleven marks means approximately twenty minutes you have been given for interpretation. Twenty minutes have been given. How much you will write down? Your structure should be correct, and you should not be missing any fundamental information. now that fundamental information if you express it in a short sentence or if you are speaking it in a long sentence it's your choice if you are speaking it in a long sentence it's not good if the message is same but it is given in five words i mean it depends i can give a message in 10 word sentence you can give a message in seven word sentence so my three words are just extra and i'm not going to get any marks for those three extra words because message is same so it's not important about writing long or writing short it is more about that you touch all areas and you give the message and whatever i spoke like you asked me how should i draft my answer so whatever i spoke here while doing this thing just put my words on paper this is your answer that's all there is no uh, you know rocket science inside of creating an answer whatever i spoke on profitability and roc e and the gearing listen to my words twice put it on paper your answer is ready